Hello and welcome to the inaugural episode of the Baseball Podcast. The Baseball Podcast. Yeah, we wanted to go with something that really hasn't been done before. We were really hoping to, uh, you know, go off road a little bit because that's kind of who we are. We're we're kind of mavericks. Yeah, people don't talk about baseball, and more importantly, people don't have podcasts. People, yeah, people don't podcast, right. so we th- we figured we'd bridge the gap. Yeah, and people don't baseball, so I mean that's three for three. <laughs> And that uh, that last part is disturbingly true, <laughs> more and more. But yeah. you know, what people don't baseball? Yeah, yeah, nobody baseball. Yeah, that because MLB kids... has this big thing where like they really don't want you to watch your home team on streaming. So like, hey, oh dude, my gosh, you get MLB TV, dude, you can pay us a lot of money, okay, and you can't watch the only thing that you want to watch. Yeah, that, yeah you that'll watch, be more money. Yeah, you can watch every game that isn't. Yeah, dude, that, the game that'll be more money if those, you have a cable. Package. You gotta get those <laughs> T-Mobile rewards, dude. Speaking of, no, 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 no. That's what it is. It's the T-Mobile gives you. MLB TV and MLB TV wa- lets you watch every game that isn't your home team. You don't, right, get, well, let's, you don't get let's, an option. Hold on. Nope. nope. Let's not talk poorly about our first sponsor, T-Mobile. Um, <laughs> <He's right. laughs> I feel like we shouldn't. Yeah, I feel like we shouldn't be casting as birds. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna be talking. We're gonna be hella podcasting about yeah. hella baseball. So we have a, a we have a rich itinerary for you guys today. It's a wash with possibilities. Well, well, first of all, who are we? Mm. I okay, so I'm gonna lead this off by saying I don't think anybody cares. But yeah, we're no one. But <laughs> it's what it comes down. To. All right, I'll start. My name is uh, Tom Quirk. I like baseball, and um, that's my uh, that's my credentials <laughs> for the podcast. <laughs> Bio, man. So we're gonna we're gonna slide it over to to my uh, my friend Your, and colleague. Yeah, my friend and yours, <laughs> Ethan Pachersky. I also like baseball. And that's about it. I have no yeah, credentials. Not, not to be fair, writer for a baseball blog that um, no one, a, reads. at least a handful of people <laughs> read. That's true. That is true. I do I, write for. I've been on there. I poked around the side. Yeah, I've been to that website yeah, you, you've, twice. You've, yeah, you've dipped yeah. your toes in the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I read your article about um, you know the Royals and stuff, and uh, it was good. And ready, we're gonna freaking dangle this carrot in front of you. If you want to know what blog. Ethan Pachersky writes for, listen to the end of the episode. Yeah, stick around. And you're going to have to email us at thebaseballpodcast at gmail.com. And, and if that isn't... Ethan at yeah. thebaseballpodcast. <laughs> and if that isn't available, we'll have to figure we'll, something out. We'll have an email for you once we confirm that we can use that. Email. We'll put it out on yeah. all our socials. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It'll be, that, it'll that be our link will, tree. Yeah, that we'll also make You guys got us later. on Tumblr. Please, please, uh, wait, wait. We got two more hosts to introduce yeah. here. Yeah, Tom said something about an OnlyFans, too, so we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, that's yeah, we'll also on our yeah. link tree. Uh, so, Nick Sikoris, um, I am... They're very into baseball. I'm very, very into baseball. Wow. Oh, boy. So, oh boy. Yeah. Wow. So, no, um, I, I, so Nick, we, can you tell us a little bit about what kind of credentials <laughs> do you have in the baseball world? Do you, Are you maybe a GM? Uh, so, I played for uh, two Little Leagues. Okay. Two of them. Two of them. Two so of them. was, it, them? was it the money I, or the women? I, like, what made you change? I, I'm something of a baseball extraordinaire. No, I would say <laughs> that. You know what I mean? If I can step in here for a second, I don't think it was money or women. I think it was just pure love of the game. Yeah. Yeah, so, so tell us what influenced your free agency decision. To, to sign with the Mets of Marion Golf? Yeah, exactly. Like to <laughs> sign with the free agency. <laughs> All right, so, Too much um, juice in the and so, 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 so who are you? Yeah, we have a fourth so, host. So my name is Brian Quirk, and um, I'm like a fringe baseball guy. No, you're not. I'm really into baseball. No, you're not. He's your <laughs> rival. Brian's, Brian's mostly a sports ball kind of guy. Yeah, I'm really into sports ball. Yeah, Brian um, likes baseball in the sense that, you know, he doesn't hate it. Brian doesn't really do baseball. He doesn't really do baseball. But what he does do is eat this Chinese food. Yeah. That we have right tell, now. tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, do you maybe. Um, what do you do for a living? Well, okay, so. Here's the thing. What's your I'm, favorite fast food chain? That's a gas station. Okay, wait. That's oh. actually a question for the field. I feel like we yeah, should write that a little bit later. Write, write that in. You can write in your answers. Um, <laughs> yeah, Ethan had you can baseball. email us at. I do want to say, while I'm not what you would call a huge baseball guy, I actually did have the uh, pleasure of sharing the field with Nick over here. Uh, in the Little Leagues for a brief period of That's time. That's true. As did I, actually. Yeah, That's we true. Actually, we were actually all Little League teammates. We got a good good deal of experience going on here. So, well, the the knowledge might not be up to snuff. We got plenty of experience to go around. Yeah. I mean, uh, so just to give you guys an idea, um, our team did not have a losing record one year. So um, that's the kind of uh, it's kind of athleticism you're looking at. Impressive. Sitting around this table. I Ethan is also a Marion Golf veteran, but a couple years after us. I, yeah, I was part of the I was part of the new breed. We we're sort of like they were Derek Jeter to my 
Fernando Tatis. Yeah, you know the in the old the show games how they would have like the the golden era all stars and then like the silver era all stars. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they have know, like the eighty see... sluggers versus like the disco boomers. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we were the golden era. He was the silver era. We're not telling these guys. Our coach got bit by a cat once. I think he died. Right? Isn't that what yeah. happened? Yeah. I don't think he did. But well, I think he. I think I think he didn't this. die. You don't, you don't remember he got bit by a cat? Dude, he went to the hospital for like a month. No. <laughs> like, like, for what? Everybody has Listen, one of those guys in their Here at the lives. baseball podcast, we get bitten by cats, we bite the cats right back. <laughs> yeah. You can take that to the bank. We are cat biters here. And he's right. So, so, so what is it that we do here? Nothing as of this. yet. Yeah, 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 honestly. I mean, what, I is it, like, what is it that we plan to do? I feel like our very esoteric name really says it all. You know, it if a you lot really of, dig a into the, the substance of our name, I mean, it tells you everything you need to know. I mean, yeah, but that could yeah, there are baseball. I would, I would say there are many ambiguities a when it comes with, to our name. We do have we do have a couple of things on the docket though on the itinerary. A name with and, such um, depth as the baseball podcast leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's very <laughs> it's very general. But you know, why don't we ungeneralize it for you know all. Are we all right. unpack this for, for our for legions our, of adorable yeah, fans. Yeah, for, for our listeners. All right, so what do we have on the docket? Well, well, just give us the first one. All right, the first one, we're going to be interviewing, I put international baseball figures. We're going to be interviewing anybody who, frankly, is willing to talk to us. Mm. Yeah, people so, people who have walked on to baseball. Yeah, so we, yeah whether they be international or domestic guests. How do, we, how do we link up a thing so people can call in? Because um, all you guys You know what we have to do right first now. is we have to generate the interest for that. So, um... We're, we'll get back to you guys when people care about this right. podcast. I'm I know everybody's issue. dying to call in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah people can't I'm, wait. Yeah, I'm the phone issue. lines are lighting up, so... Uh... Well, here it is, here it is. <laughs> I'm going to send out the official CTA. If you guys would like to call in, you can do that. Yeah. So, uh, we're going to be doing some interviewing of people who are in the baseball world. More so than us, So, obviously. So, for example... People unlike us who actually have baseball credentials, right? Right. We've talked to. You're a good example. We we've talked to Ry Pythakos, who I'm sure people know, the manager of the Greek national baseball team. So that's a person who's actually involved in the baseball industry. All right. Yeah. And you who know, would Ry give a perspective? Pythakos unlike also us, also happens to be named after, you know, bread. One of the delicious yeah, breads pretty, of, of our time. It's hard to run away from that. <laughs> yeah. That's. I mean, it's it's all just right there. So yeah, so we could have managers. I doubt we could have players, you think but Rye? we could we could try. We could have broadcasters, right? Yeah, I'd we've be talked to, to people say, in the Australian Baseball League. Yeah, maybe in seven to ten years' time. I mean, maybe we could net a couple of AAA guys. Wait, Oops. wait, please. What is Rye short for? Something like Rye Rylium? Uh, uh, ideally, it would be. I don't think it is. Uh, <laughs> in a perfect world. Yeah, okay, so the, so, so that is a so that's a good way to transition into our next thing. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we also want to talk about the WBC, the World Baseball Classic, and yeah. many of our listeners obviously will be saying, but Ethan, there's no World Baseball Classic going on right now. In fact, the last one got canceled. And to that, I'd say yes, but yeah. there hopefully will be one at some point. Yeah. So we'll talk about what's coming up. I think the WBC qualifiers are coming up, so we'll talk about that. It's probably very difficult to find anybody who's given any sort of analysis on those games. So, I would uh, think no one is discussing so World Baseball qualifier games. So yeah, you might not like us, but this might be the place you have to go. We also want to talk about winter leagues. I mean, the Australian Baseball League uh, got canceled for this season, which is a bummer, but they've had like Delman Young play and Manny Ramirez signed up to play last year Cornelius Randolph Cornelius, Cornelius Wait, Randolph so there's a lot of stars. Oh, that's the other here. thing <laughs> we're unfortunately Phillies fans yep so mm -hmm. we'll yeah, be doing so. a lot of making fun of Ruben Amaro of Dave Dombrowski pretty much Anybody associated you know, with Hector, 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 Hector Neris. Hector Luna. Now wait, yeah, I'm Hector after a Luna. wild card into the fire here, guys. What's the deal with Jose Canseco? Because I saw a video that that dude's like homeless now. I think he didn't. He kind of lives the most action-packed so, like, life. Here's ever. here's what you need about guy. here's what you need to know about Jose Canseco. He has a brother named Ozzy, an identical twin. The guy looks just like him. Jose Canseco signed up to do like a celebrity boxing match and sent Ozzy to do it. No, who was it? Yeah. You tell me, Tom Hanks' brother like does all the Tom Hanks. Oh yeah, Tom voices. Hanks' brother does like voice work as Tom Hanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I like the idea of like a celebrity like cage match with not the right Canseco. Yeah, it was you know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's even worse. And, and yeah, yeah, like nobody's gonna know. You can like, see 
him. <laughs> like, it, it, no, they wouldn't know. But he's an identical twin. Um, so we also want to discuss, I think this is going to be internationally themed because there's and plenty of people theme. with actual talent and actual money who are talking about regular baseball things. So we have to find a niche yeah. somewhere. So we want to talk about international players, maybe like Didi Gregorius from the Netherlands or Max Kepler from Germany. We're so, trying to get into like a little bit more deep cut territory and not just like, oh, dude, you hear about this guy that every single organization in Major League Baseball has been scouting for years? Well, ready? Did you hear the Starling Marte sign with the Mets? I'm sure everyone's talking now, about Now, I do that. want to talk about that a little bit because as Phillies fans, we do have to balance it out a little bit with, like, everybody wants the Mets to be the Phillies' rivals, and honestly, with the incompetence that both organizations show... I'm starting to believe. Yeah, there's some rivalry. <laughs> the Mets, yeah. it to the be Mets the Braves, are the Mets like, are so funny though. But like, 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 so like I feel Phillies. like it started like they signed Carlos Beltran and we're like, here we go, manager of the future, good looking guy, knows baseball inside and out, and then the whole cheating thing came down, and then they didn't even have a manager. Wait, didn't get to manage. Yeah, it wasn't even. No, their they didn't fault. get to manage a game. No, they what? fired him. Yeah, because he was like the ringleader of the Astros cheating scandal. So like the Mets, and then and then and then their GM was like sending nudes to all these women, and then and then they had that other guy who was. Terrible. Back when they first started to be like the you know like the joke that they now are, it was because they were supposed to be like this financial powerhouse, and then they lost all their money <laughs> yeah. to Bernie May. Right. <laughs> now it is or was Carl Crawford ever involved with the Yanks or the Mets, whatever team we were talking about? Here, okay, he, he played he against is, the Yankees. A lot. <laughs> he is for the sake of this story. Did you know Carl Crawford owns his own record label now that signed Megan Thee Stallion? <laughs> okay. Carl Crawford. Yeah, man. Carl. So we you guys know this but our adoring fan base doesn't we we all yeah. played in this fantasy baseball league and at one point i had matt harvey in 2013 when he was like lighting the league on fire i wanted to trade him right when they announced that his innings were going to be capped and so i went hey i'll trade matt harvey i'm not expecting full value for him but he's still going to pitch for like another month so he'll play well and so i was getting like decent offers and this guy who to protect his identity will call ianati was <laughs> It hits me up and he goes, I'll give you Carl Crawford. And I was like, and who else? And he was like, and Carl Crawford. And he goes, I only get Matt Harvey for a month. You'll have Carl Crawford for the rest of the year. Yeah, but you're catching Z's on a big opportunity there, dude. He signed Megan Thee Stallion. Well, yeah, I, had I, your had, fantasy had, record to him. <laughs> had I known that at, off the chain. Had I known that at the time, it might have got her own It might have had a different outcome. At Popeyes, dude. You if know? anything, you were ripping him up. I do involved. miss playing with him. Do you remember when do you remember when he was trying to trade everybody like John Buck and like Matt Moore? Oh no, no, no. Nick dropped John. On Buck like a month into the season right because he had like a hot like with, with the idea that oh let's see if I not he picks him up and tries to make value out of it yeah because and that'll just and it eat, worked and, and, it and that'll just eat up a roster spot was my thinking go ahead tell him what happened so he immediately picks up John Buck and starts offering to him to people for like not quite stars but like not John no Buck no because no because he wouldn't just say like oh I'll give you John Buck for Adam Wainwright or something he, he would throw him into packages like he was helping you out yeah, yeah. so yeah. yeah so he he'd, he'd be Wheeler. like yeah, he'd be like I'll tell you what. How about like Chris Medlin and John Buck for like Max Scherzer? Yeah, for Carlos and he'd be like, Gonzalez. This is, what are you talking yeah. about? And he'd be like, Well, because you get like a pretty good pitcher in, in Chris Medlin, and then you get John Buck. It's like what? Right. That's not helpful. Yeah, it's like, a shame. Right. I wasn't in the league when he did this, dude. You could just hit up the trade whore and just yeah. it off. <laughs> yeah, Brian right. was in our. Well, no, so that is what happened. Do you remember Anthony? Right. So Anthony was this kid who was so nice in our league. We're calling him Anthony. really nice. Yeah, to protect his identity, <laughs> we'll, we'll call we'll call him Anthony. <laughs> this kid was, was so nice, and I and I. Just takes everything from man. I forget what the trade was, but it was oh, something it was, bananas. Dude, he took like Tulowitzki and Tulewitzki stuff. Tulowitzki and Miguel Cabrera for like for like a bag of balls. It was oh, yeah, like, it was, it was terrible. One, two, three. Yeah, four. so so he just gives him everything. And so at that point, I was like, all right, Anthony's not going to win. Somebody's got to beat this guy. You know what? what? If you can't beat him, join him. So I just went and picked up the bones, and I was like, Anthony, I noticed you have uh, Adam Jones and Salvador Perez in there. How you feeling about them? Feeling it was about something a little calm. Yeah, it was something. Well, well you know what it is. Like, I don't I don't want to play that way. But as soon as one person decides to play that. Way. Everybody has yeah, to play it's that the way. Yeah. It's the whole idea of when people are, you know, like Democrats always do this, or, or like Republicans drag you down into the mud, and then you go, "We'll just be better than them." And then people go, "We can't win elections by yeah, being better than them." Doesn't work. No, I'm you just saying. I mean? I'm just no, saying. I'm telling, dude, it's it's nuclear proliferation. If it's exactly. Somebody's I'm, farming somebody, then everybody's yeah, got to farm. Exactly. I'm, I'm just trying to tell you, like, you guys had to finesse him. Like, all you got to do is show up at my door. You can fill my whole. No, house I didn't have to finesse him. I just looked at him and I was like, "Dude, just just do it." Dude, so that is a little bit of finesse. This does remind me, by the way, if we're gonna be 
doing the baseball podcast, I think we're like legally obligated to have a fantasy league in this podcast. Now, wait a minute. Is this going to be a kind of fantasy league where like, do we open up the other six or, you know, eight spots or whatever for listeners? It to depends on, uh, for patrons. Will we have six listeners? Yo, dude, can you I, imagine? I, hold on. In a, hang on. In a few years? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure we'll, I'm sure we'll. Yo, give it a couple years, we can have a 12-man league. You, <laughs> whoa. Oh, boy. Now, wait. How about this? How about this? Ready? Yes. I'm always wanting to leverage this into a little uh, financial opportunity. Why don't we <laughs> open up the guest spots in the league to patrons? Patrons. <laughs> oh, our patrons. Patrons. I hope someone actually is like listening to this somewhere and it's like, but I just don't know who to donate to. Right now. I'm on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I have my card out. I called. I called. Tell me it's, like, it's like that Futurama meme. We're like, shut up and take my money. <laughs> like, I, I gave Patreon a call. I just couldn't figure out. Yeah, I'm on the phone with tech support. They have no record of this <laughs> podcast. The, the baseball. They're, yeah, they're not familiar with you guys. So um, if we do have too. this podcast fantasy league with listeners, it is my sincere hope that the four of us just finish 8th, 9th, 10th, oh and 11th. Yeah, well, flat on, yeah, flat on my face. Hope. I want to say, before I hoard myself out of the trades, I feel like I was doing pretty well in that fantasy league like six years See, ago. Brian's <laughs> problem? Is that true, Tom? Brian's that problem true? was not drafting because you can kind of auto-draft a reasonable team in a lot of leagues. Brian's problem was that I feel like le- like fantasy leagues are won in season with like trades and like, you know, good pickups and stuff. And, and you know what comes Brian out to? doesn't know who F- these people Effort. Are. Pay attention. Well, you know what comes out It's the same like thing with, with uh, Kyle, you know, to protect his identity. <laughs> right. We'll we, go on we Kyle. We played with this guy, <laughs> Kyle. He's a very good friend of ours. We love Kyle. But Kyle would go through these spurts where he just wasn't looking at his team in like April and May when like all those like hot hands for the year are starting to go. And then in like June and like July when all the guys who were <laughs> yeah. like having a good week are on there, he was just roster churn. Yeah, he'd start hard. putting in all the effort and be like, I don't know, man. How do you feel about Brennan Bosch? I just want to yeah. say Kyle's a snake in the grass too, man. He offered me a burrito for, who was it? John Carlos. John Carlos. Yeah, that's right. I, dude, it's been like seven years. I never got that burrito. That's all I'm trying that to say. We, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Does that mean we ha- we're having Kyle on the podcast to squash the beef? To squash the beef. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll we'll have, beef. That's that's okay. We will it's have official. a fantasy episode like every now and then where we bring on one of our former rivals. <laughs> that's, a segment. that's a segment. That's a segment. Squash, squash the beef. The beef. Yeah, there we'll have go. him call in. That's a segment. To, like, I know he could be a regular. On so okay, so speaking. When he offered me Jake Odorizzi for like forty-five home run era Jose Batista. I think I specifically said Odorizzi isn't good, and then I you famously said. Yeah. All yeah. right, moving on from fantasy. Cause so, you know. so speaking of segments like squash the beef, let's tell our listeners Squeeze. about about games that we play. So, how did these start? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> we went to a certain gas station to protect their identity. We'll call it Sheets. We went to a certain gas station, and we were eating outside. And for whatever reason. We went on Baseball Reference and pulled up, like, the 2012 Astros or something. And just went, you think you guys can name the roster? And so one person sat there and was like, okay, catcher. And then we just, off to the races. And then you go to first base, second base, whatever. And you try and name the whole team. And we did pretty well. And we did that, like, four or five times throughout the night. And the one consistency was Tom going, Melvin Mora. And us going, Melvin Mora wasn't on that team. And it, yeah, like but then four, I got him on, like, two teams Yeah, like, like four or five times in a row. He just kept guessing Melvin Moore, and it was just never Melvin Moore, and eventually came around. Anyway, the point is, the game is called Melvin Moore. We have a lot of these. We have games called Elmer Descends. We have games called Brendan Ryan. We have games called Nate McLouth. And stick around for the next episode, because we'll be giving you those games. So the rules of Melvin Moore are quite simple. I'll say, for instance, we're not going to do this because we know it too well. The 2008 Phillies, and they'll just start giving names. It doesn't have to be in order. Tom might go, Pat Burrell. And yeah, Nick and, so and Nick might go, Raul Ibanez. And I go, Raul Ibanez wasn't on that team. He was the next year. And ah. then... And then we'll keep moving. And this is important. If he gets stuck, I can go, this guy had a couple good years, and he got traded for Michael Saunders. And then he go, Jay Happ. You mentioned Pat Burrell, and I want this to be public. Wait a minute. Are you squashing the beef betwixt you and this Pat Burrell? This is our first whoa, squash whoa, whoa, the beef whoa. segment. Wait a minute. Welcome to squash the beef. Okay, so I, I want this to be public just in case Pat's out there listening. <laughs> what do you mean in case? When I was a Could you address lad. it to Pat Burrell? When I was a young lad in, in Dear Pat. Yeah, yeah, could you? Yeah, no, could hold, you, hold, you, hold, 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 hold on. Dear Pat. Go Pat, ahead. Pat. Dear Pat. Dear Pat the a little respect. <laughs> a little more formal. Yeah. So I feel like I deserve most of the blame for this, but part of this is also my dad's fault because I was still a young, impressionable, like 14, 15 year old <laughs> in 2007 and 2008. I thought Pat Burrell sucked. 
he had such a stupid face when he was playing, <laughs> and I couldn't stand him. I was like, dude, the Phillies have got to get rid of this guy. Yo, I also hated Pat Burrell. Did you hate Pat Burrell as much I as remember, we did? I remember hating him because that's what everybody else said. Well, Ethan was like 11. Yeah. I hated him. He drove, remember that one you time know what, you he know drove what it around is? the field in like a Jeep? Do you remember that? Wait, what? It was no. like he like no. hit a home run or something. This they, is like, the stuff that Brian the remembers about. Yeah, baseball. see, I'm the fine details. <laughs> yeah, Brian's the kind of guy who would be like, "Remember that year that Todd Helton had?" And he'd be like, "Is that the year that the, that the Rockies got stuck underneath that tarp?" You know what I'm talking about? Wow. The grounds crew guys that got I stuck under the tarp. Oh, yeah, that rock. But wait, so <laughs> it's hilarious. We're recording an apology. Really, ever since Pat Burrell left the Phillies, the Phillies have been desperate to find a guy who is right-handed who hits for power and gets on base a lot. And I started looking back. And I like read Pat Burrell's fan graphs page and stuff. I'm like, the Phillies have been looking for Pat Burrell all this time. And all this time I've been sitting here being like, Pat Burrell was terrible. I'm so glad we got rid of that guy. Yeah. I would do anything to have Pat Burrell. Oh my gosh. I, I, would, I would be trans- transformed. Hold on, hold on. This doesn't sound to me like an apology. This sounds uh, to me like you had a good thing and no, you let it go. I, and now you know I'm you're missing. I'm laying the groundwork. That is He's true. preparing to squash it. That is true. You, you don't so know I what you got till it's gone. No, ready? No more frills and flowers. I want to say from the bottom of my my heart pat if you're listening pat. no don't give him the option not to pat pat you're listening <laughs> <laughs> i'm put, i'm putting my hand on your shoulder and i'm saying pat i was wrong he said he'll think you, about you, it. I'm coming to you, you Pat were good. Hand. You were good, and I didn't deserve you. He said That's he'll it. sleep on it. Pat, the ball is in your court, and I really hope that you're willing to squash this beef that you didn't know you had. <laughs> it's, feel, it's not Pat, it's you. I feel like he's it's probably... It's true, yeah. He's probably pretty hurt, though. He probably I'm not ready for a right-handed <laughs> power bat relationship right now. Okay, <laughs> alright, so with that being said, now that we've done our first squash the beef, although, you know, it's, it's still outstanding whether or not this beef is fully squashed. It's pending. Pat, yeah. let us know. It's been um, sent, not the let's, let's get on to um what team do you have for us all right the team is the 2014 los angeles dodgers okay so this is going to be like the andre ethier era andre ethier is in there okay matt, matt kemp matt kemp no way should be in there the yeah Rogers. there he is he's okay. on the bench okay, okay. okay russell start. martin no no he, okay. i guess he was a was first uh, base year a aaron hernandez yes yes aaron so <laughs> wait, so, so wait so if russell martin's not the catcher it must be uh, was this guy good this guy was not very good he's like Madison? defensively minded he was traded to the Phillies for Carlos Ruiz. I need another hit. <laughs> he's right-handed. He was Clayton Kershaw's personal catcher. Ah. Uh, he has a first name that's initials, and he shares it with it a, a famous White Sox. AJ. Catcher. Yeah, AJ. Feely. Ellis. AJ Ellis. AJ. Excellent. Okay. I was go. gonna think AJ Feely. First, first base. First base. This still... was a this was a big Nick guy. This was a big Nick guy. Oh, Adrian Gonzalez. Oh, Adrian Gonzalez. Uh, second base would have been. You would know him as a Marlins All Star. Dan Ugla. Oh. That's something we're gonna have to get into. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Dan Ugla will be there. Wait, it wasn't. It no, I squashed on, that beef long ago. It was uh, on Hell Pagan. Wait, wait, I don't know him as a Marlins All Star. He was an All Star in the Marlins like a year or two later. Prado? No, nah, he was like a, like a he was like a, a short, really fast. Orlando Hudson? No, I mean that his does father. Describe his Orlando father Hudson. was a Phillies closer. Oh, oh last, D Gordon. D Gordon. D Gordon. D Gordon. Shortstop. It's not Seager yet, right? No, this guy was really good. Then he went to the Red Sox in the middle left fielder, and he was bad. Oh, Hanley. 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 Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Third uh, base. Third base. They have listed as a player who I don't know what you'd remember. I guess like a white. White Sox, he was pretty good. He was chubby, and he was a shortstop for a long time. That was a White Sox. In like Juan Uribe. Juan Uribe. Ooh, I got that in one try. Left field, <sighs> should we let Brian take it? A famous music producer. Oh, who but the, the one signer illustrious. of Megan the Stallion. <laughs> Was that, is that who it is? Yeah, it's Carl yeah. Crawford. Now, the now, now hold on, count. hold on. So, we, so, we, I get down so, brass tacks. I don't think he's a producer. I think he just signed Megan Thee Stallion. This is why we have him. Right? Well, he just wrote his name on the paper. And was like, all right, Chad Billings yeah. on this team? We'll get to the pitchers in a minute. Yeah, well, let's do this in a Wait, so you're telling me I don't think so. Is it center field I don't think so. it's somebody else? Camp is listed on the bench. Ethier is listed as center field. I'm just going off I'm going off baseball reference. Right field, Phenom. Cuban guy. Oh, Puig. Puig. All right, Camp. Wait, Puig? Wow, dude. You ever think about somebody you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, Yasiel Puig. He's like one of those newer players. And then you're like, yeah, he was like 23, old, seven actually. years ago. So I guess he's like 30 years old. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so the bench. This is a very good third baseman now on Turner. the Dodgers. Turner. Oh, this is a good name, man. This is a, his dad was an All Star in like the 80s for the Pirates. This guy's like a first base outfielder like Scott type. Van Slyke. Scott Van Slyke. Scott Van Slyke. Remember Scott Van Slyke? Yeah. There, there's a catcher. It's like completely defensively minded. Jeff um, Mathis. <laughs> no, but like keep thinking along those lines. Are we gonna get this guy? Probably Do we know not. who he is. Pro- yeah, but you're probably not. Gonna 
gonna go. Drew Butera. Okay, they have a shortstop here. He's on the Marlins now. But Danny Hatchaburia. No, he's on the Marlins now. Okay. He's, he had a pretty good year. Danny Spires. Isn't their shortstop the right now Jazz Chisholm? No, he's their second baseman. Oh, that's a good there. name. That's a good name. Yeah, I don't know why his name's Jazz, but it's good. <laughs> so this guy, I don't know how to get you to get him. They just signed him to extension. You would know him as a Marlin. He was only on the Dodgers for like a couple games. Uh, yeah, yeah, I feel like I should get this, and I don't think I'm going to. We can move on. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to him. This is another bad catcher. I'm just going to give it Tim Fedorovich. I don't know how to yeah, get him. There's no way. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, there's an infielder that you're going to like, man. This guy you remember as a speedster on the Angels in like 2005. He was so fast. David Eckstein? No, no. On the Angels? Dave on the Robert? Angels. No. No, no. He was like the only good thing to watch on the Angels for a little while. I didn't watch the Angels in 2005. That's, well, so. that's an excellent point. His name is spelled bananas. It's just spelled Wait, so. is it Sean Fagan? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Wait, it's, it's Sean Fagan. C H O N E. I think it's Sean. I, I, I said Sean. Should which, we see it? You know. Yeah, it says Sean. Desmond okay. Deshaun Fagan. Wait, how's it spelled though? C H O N E. It is spelled Chone. So wow. It's spelled Chone. Yeah, we're just gonna true. go. With okay, him. okay. This is another go. This guy is like a shortstop, like infielder type. He was a career backup. You remember him as a Cub? He was a Blue Jay too. Barney. Darwin Barney. Oh, that's also. Uh, great you name. already said Arisbella Rubarena. Oh, I didn't. I said a Danny Hetcheverry. <laughs> well, I already <laughs> said Arisbella Rubarena. <laughs> Those are both. Yeah, Arisbella Rubarena. Hell of a name. Wasn't he that guy whose name was like a circle in his uniform? He was so many letters. Yeah, he was bad. All right, this guy was a World Series hero this past year for the Braves. Outfielder. Jock Peterson. Jock Peterson. Jock Peterson. Peterson. Oh, this catcher's a good one, man. This guy bit off his teammate's ear in AAA. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, you're not. Well, you're give Miguel Olivo. Yeah, Miguel Olivo. Miguel Olivo. <laughs> and on that topic, whose ear did he bite off? That I don't remember. Was it, who was it? Oh. it? He was a Cuban guy. Was it a pitcher? Like a, like a left fielder who like went crazy for like a month and then just like never Is played Marie again. Tomas? No, wait. No, no, no. Let, no. Can we talk about how that happens? Like, what was the context behind that? I have no idea. Mike know. Tyson, and, I guess. And frankly, I don't care. I just I, I like do the know. idea. Like, is it like a locker room dispute? Like me and me and Nick are arguing the locker room. No, I know it happened in the dugout, ah! like during a game. Right, right. So like they're in the yeah, dugout. Well, I think what he's saying. asking, what gets you to the ear biting part? <laughs> well, I'm just curious. Well, yeah, yeah. What couldn't you fix with words? And then after words weren't enough, what couldn't you fix with a punch? Yeah. What about like, like normal yeah. violence? Well, listen, listen. Mike Tyson. <laughs> Acceptable violence. Mike Tyson bit someone's ear off, but that was in the middle of combat that was prearranged. Were they just in like a scuffle? And also, Mike Tyson spent his whole career. Yeah, they got it a, a little dust up. And what's so what? He just grabbed his head and just went for the. Ear? It seems that way. Yeah, yeah I don't think I there's guess video. Kind of we might have to get both those guys and squash the beef. Alex Guerrero. And yeah, who's we'll... the other guy? Miguel Olivo is the biter. Yeah, Alex since, Guerrero is the bitey. Since you guys are listening <laughs> the to the this... bited one. <laughs> okay, I don't know how to give you Carlos Trienfeld. Um, oh, that would have been I don't think there is a way to do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how to. I don't know how to give you Jamie I know Romack that name, either. But like, oh, I never would have. All right, I'm just gonna give you the names we're not gonna get. Jamie Romack. I don't even Clint, know that Clint Robinson. Uh, I don't really. And and Mike Baxter. Wait, you didn't give me. We're not gonna get Mike Baxter, formerly of the Mets. Yeah, former. Met. There's one more hitter that you're gonna get. Me it's or an us? Out, uh, everybody, not Brian. It's an outfielder, <laughs> guy from Curacao. I think he was a really good fielder and he's really fast. Bad at hitting. You'd remember him as a, a national and he was a Philly at one point. That lefty guy. Yeah, that lefty guy. Oh, Roger Bernadino. Roger oh. Bernadino. All right, pitchers, you can name a few. Go ahead. Uh, is Chad Billingsley on this one? Chad Billingsley is not on this Can team I ask if uh, is Clayton Kershaw? Kershaw on this Clayton team? Kershaw is on this team. This okay. guy should have won the Cy Young over Jake Arrieta that one year. Granky? Granky. Granky. Yeah. They have a guy who you remember as like a Diamondbacks All Star. I want to say Brandon Webb, but I know it's wrong. No, he was a Diamondback and like an A and a Marlin and a Dan Heron. Oh, Dan nice. Heron. Oh, nice. Dan Heron. They have a guy from South Korea who's now on the Blue Jays. Dungeon. Hyunjin Ryu. They have a guy who you remember as a, as a Red Sox World Series champ. He no hit the Phillies. Oh, Josh Beckett. Josh Beckett. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're like hey, World Series hero for the. I don't know. He no hit the Phillies. Oh yeah, Josh Beckett. <laughs> I was just referencing this player as someone in our fantasy league that I and Audi would try and pawn off on people. He was like a left-handed starter on the Braves and the Pirates. Paul Mahal. Paul Mahal. Mm, okay. That's a good name, man. That was a good hint because uh, yeah. I don't think I would have gotten any of it. Actually, so, so this guy, I, this I is have. not his legal name. He's listed as something else here, but you know him as an Indian starting pitcher in like 2008. Oh, Changed Fausto Carmona, Fa a.k.a. Roberto, <laughs> Roberto oh, Hernandez. Yes. I don't know who Carlos Frias is. I don't know who Jamie Wright is. Stephen Fife was bad. This guy, you remember, he was their closer for a little while right before Kenley Jansen got good. Dude, the Blue Jays tried so hard to make him a thing, and he was just bad. Oh, uh, wait a minute. And then he was a Mariner. Brandon League. Brandon League. Mm. All I right. was like, this is either Brandon League or that one guy. I, I got Mariners one guess. Yeah. Is Joe Bimel on this roster? Joe Bimel. I feel like he name. died by that He's point. <laughs> He's not, but that's a good guess. Joe Bimel. 
This guy was always good. this guy was always good in MLB 2K8. He was a giant. Antonio Alfonseca in MLB yes. 2K8. Uh, he was always that's a bad that's a bad as a giant Brad penny. No, he was an all star as a pirate. I didn't know that. It's not Brad Penny. He was an all star as a pirate, and that year he had a 78 ERA plus. Wait, wait, wait. So this dude's really good in 08, the show. I remember him being good in 08. In, no, in MLB 2K8. Remember Tom the one with Jose Reyes? Nah, I, I got, was he good? On? He was good as a giant. He was no, he wasn't good. He was like man. Oh wait, he was on the giant in 2008 that's a, that's that's a terrible sense. team by the way is he like a righty or yeah a he's a righty kevin correa i never I you don't, don't remember do kevin correa i was not close i to remember kevin that correa. name do you remember like, that guy he was good i, I knew video. wasn't he on the padres i feel like i know dude that padres. yeah he was a padre dude that game always wanted him to be good he was one of those guys with like a potential oh then that's why he was good yeah jose dominguez nobody knows this guy is their closer now he's amazing kenley jansen yeah kenley jansen this is a good name man this guy was an indians closer he's pretty good for a while chris and perez chris perez nobody knows who jose Dominguez is Yimi Garcia we're not gonna get this that guy takes forever on the mound he's literally a meme because he takes so long on the mound he's like a Dominican oh, that, guy that Philly's commenter what's his name I think he has the highest like time between pitches in the majors it's Pedro Baez I was joking I'm gonna say Ricky Patel that's right this guy was a lefty <laughs> on the Rays when they faced the Phillies in the World Series uh Dan Wheeler no no another one Chris Wheeler wait uh, he's like red hair oh I don't remember his name but I like <laughs> I can like picture his like skill set it's our JP Howell that's, oh, right. dude, that's I, the guy that's exactly this the guy. way <laughs> oh. I don't know who's Scott Elbert is. Dude, Red Patterson does not sound real. Yo, Red Patterson Red is Patterson. like a 19. Red, like Red Patterson. Comedian. Red Patterson doesn't sound real. Chris. Red Patterson's coming into town. <laughs> Chris. He's going to do a couple minutes up on the stage. He's Chris, Chris Withrow is real, but I don't know how to give him to you. Danny Coulomb. Paco Rodriguez, remember him. There's one more player that you would remember. He had a long beard. Black. He's a giant. He's really oh, good. Oh, Brian oh, uh, Rodney. Wilson. Brian no. Wilson. Brian Wilson. Oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the team. That's should, the team. should have just said Beach Boy. Never <laughs> yeah, Beach Boy. Yeah. That's the team and their so, manager was Don Mattingly and their farm director evidently was Dejon Watson. There you go. Nice. So, so there you have it. Dejon Watson everybody. That's why we play the game. So that that is but a taste of Melvin Moore. Yeah we like to so that team wasn't like that random like there was a lot of like good players. It's on good to do like the 2007 Orioles man. Yeah. The, and yeah and when people games. were like I forgot about Jay Gibbons. Yeah, well, like that's that's what the game is about but I wanted to give a recognizable team. When you get to a team where Max Ramirez is the starting oh, manager like that's. The, oh back that's up by, where, like Taylor Tea Garden. That's kind of where our bones are made, so to speak. There'll be a lot of Melvin Mora in store for people. So into the, dare I say, the the meat of the show. One of the things <laughs> that, that we've been working on for a long time is, as we said, we love the World Baseball Classic. One of the things I like about the World Baseball Classic is that you don't have to be born in a country to play for them. You just have to be eligible to be born in a country. So that spawned this idea of, man, if every player ever were like available, what would the best team be? So it doesn't just have to be like, oh, well, Burt Blyleven was born in the Netherlands, so he can play for them. It could be anybody whose parents were from a country or they married somebody. But so the idea is, it's not just like if the Philippines could have their best players now, who would they be? It's if anybody who ever played Major League Baseball who's connected to that country could play. Who could it be? And so sometimes executive decisions need to be made. So for instance, tiebreakers. So a guy like Kevin Euclid, who is Greek to some degree, although I think really little, or he has some sort of connection to Greece. We'll put him on Team Greece. But someone might say, but he's also Jewish. So that means he could go on Team Israel. That's true. But Team Israel doesn't need a third baseman and Team Greece does. So he goes team green because it gets confusing to put a player on multiple teams so you gotta you gotta decide and what happened was teams that were already steamroller teams would have be like the united states would have the best player who ever played at every position and then the second best player who ever played on back the bench backing him up exactly and it was just kind of it, like that's not really yeah. that interesting exactly so. so the whole idea is like a guy like john smoltz is eligible to play for team italy he goes to team italy because obviously they're not as good as the united states because the united states has everybody so john smoltz goes to italy therefore he can't play for the u.s Right. Because the U.S., the replacement value is super high. They'll just put in Clayton Kershaw or whoever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But Italy will have a harder time replacing John Small. There are also outliers, right? Sometimes there are guys whose connections are weird. For instance, there's a guy named Mark Gilbert who played a couple games. He's a center fielder. In my studies, I found that Mark Gilbert is the U.S. ambassador to New Zealand or was at some point. So I went, you know what? New Zealand needs players. Mark Gilbert is connected to them in an official capacity. Throw him on the team. Yeah, right? teams like that, it's like, come on, dude. Like Sometimes you got to sometimes you gotta bend the rules a little bit. And the last rule... I don't know if this is bending a rule, but it's sort of confusing. Sometimes you just got to make a decision. And I think the best example of this, there's a guy named Jack Quinn, which sounds, I guess, Irish. Jack you. Yeah, yeah, Jack Quinn, right? I told Jack Quinn, you know. So reading about Jack Quinn, he played in like the 1900s. He was excellent, right? Like borderline Hall of Fame kind of guy. And when I looked him up, it says that Jack Quinn was born in Slovakia. So you might be thinking, well, then he'll go on Team Slovakia. But at the time, Slovakia was not known as Slovakia. I forget what it was. Austria-Hungary or something like that. Austro-Hungary. Right, it was probably something else. But the point is, he was born in modern day 
day Slovakia, which was a different country at the time, but also his parents were immigrants to that region. So who knows? And so one of the things that I found in researching him was what is Jack Quinn's ethnicity? And so his Sabre bio project kind of said people think he's Native American, people think he's Polish, people think he's Irish, all the above. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention is that his name is Johannes Pecos. So that led people to think, well, he's probably Greek. And so I kind of sat there and I read all this and I went, Ireland doesn't need any pitchers. Slovakia doesn't even have a team because there's not really any players. So that doesn't matter. The Native American team doing just fine. They don't need any pitchers. Who needs a pitcher that was mentioned in there? Greece. Is he Greek? Probably not, but he could be. And frankly, we don't know what he is. So we're just going to put him on team Greece and because, it's not game break. because they need the help. And so the whole idea is competitive balance. So if a guy, it's questionable, it's kind of murky. Obviously, I'm not just going to throw people on random teams and be like, doesn't matter. John Smoltz can play for Australia because they need a pitcher. Like that's not how it works. But a guy like Jack Quinn, where there's questions about where he's from, maybe he's Greek, just throw him on the team. So the rules basically are anybody who is connected to a nation, right? Their, their parents were born there, their grandparents, great grandparents, or their spouse or something, or they lived there for a long amount of time. We're going to put them on a team. So Team Israel has weird rules because they have what's called, in Israel, they have what's called the law of return, which means anybody who's Jewish themselves or their parents or their grandparents are Jewish or their spouse is Jewish, they're eligible for citizenship. So you don't have to be from Israel. You don't have to be connected to Israel. All you have to do is be Jewish or connected to somebody who's Jewish. So that's how they got all these guys play for them in the World Baseball Classic. Right. So shall we? Let's discuss Team Israel. So we're just going to go through the team. I think the first guy, I'm sure who's a really nice guy, <laughs> evidently was a little bit of a wizard with the glove in his time, but nobody knows who this guy is. The first guy, the catcher, played from 1933 to 1942, and his name is Harry Danning. He was a New York Giant. He had 285, 334, 15, with 57 homers, 397 RBIs. So and he, they, they, honestly, back then, for like a catcher, for a catcher, really not bad. Yeah, so he had a 104 OPS plus, which is like league average, but he had four all-star selections, which I think was merited because of his glove work. And there's not a ton of Jewish catchers, right? There's like Mike Lieberthal and Brad Ausmus. So this guy seems to be the best of the bunch. He is evidently well regarded as a defender. It's I haven't there. looked at the Jewish team yet or the Israeli team, but it kind of seems like Mike Lieberthal was a little bit better. Am I wrong? I remember them being similar in a lot of regards. Mike Lieberthal's two-time All-Star and won one gold glove. Harry Danny's a four-time All-Star. Gold glove wasn't around at the time, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Mike Lieberthal's a 15 15.3 war, according to baseball reference. And Harry Denning has 14.6. So I would call that a yeah. negligible difference. Yeah, kind of a wash. Over 4,695 plate appearances. Mike Lieberthal hit 274, 337, 446. <laughs> For 783 <laughs> OPS and a 101 OPS plus. Keep in mind, this is in like the late 90s, 2000s, very offensive heavy time period. Harry That's Danning awesome. playing in more of a pitcher's era, over 3,194 plate appearances. Hit 285, 330, 415, 745 OPS, 104 OPS There's plus. A big discrepancy in home runs. It looks like Danning's hit, what was it? Danning 50, hit 57. 57. Lieberthal's got 150. 150. Yeah. Lieberthal's better on offense. Harry Danning lost the rest of his career after 1942 to World War II, and he was only 30. 30 years old. Mike Lieberthal obviously played a full career, retired at 35. So this is one yeah. where I just made a decision and I just went, I think Harry Danning's probably a little bit better. If you guys think Mike Lieberthal is better, that's fine. It's just a thought exercise. First base, Hank Greenberg. One of the greatest hitters. So ever. so 6,098 played appearances and we'll get into why that number's low. He had 313, 412, 605, 331 homers and a bananas 158 OPS plus. And one of the important things to keep in mind, he played from 1933 to 1941 and then enlisted in the army and then didn't play again until a good amount of time into 1945, but I think he lost most of the 45 season too. So he basically lost like four and a half, five years. He probably would have gotten to 500 homers. He probably lost five 40 homer seasons. At least 100. Yeah, yeah. this guy's a legend. Just so you know, he's a Hall of Famer, obviously. Two-time MVP, five-time All-Star, two-time World Series champ. He has a 55.5 war. Second baseman, Ian Kinsler, who actually is a member of Team Israel now and is an Israeli citizen, fun fact. 54.1 war, four-time All-Star, World Series champ, two-time Gold Glove, two-time 30-30 club member. He's got... 1,999 hits. That's a bummer, that's, man. That's a rough um, yeah. <laughs> but Whatever. <laughs> but so he's got 416 doubles. He's got 257 career homers. He had 243 steals to 74 caught stealing. He slashed 269, 337, 440, 777 OPS, and a 107 OPS plus. Over 8,299 plate appearances. Okay, so moving on to third base is a guy who people probably don't know nowadays, but he was a star in his day. A guy named Al Rosen. He was an MVP. He was a four-time All-Star, a World Series champion on that. Bob Feller team. He has 4,374 plate appearances, 165 doubles, 192 homers.
corners. He slashed 285, 384, 495 for an 879 OPS and a 137 OPS plus. So to round out the infield, we have a shortstop who is not Jewish himself. Up to this point, all the players have been Jewish. This guy was born to a Jewish mother and a French father. He is eligible because he has a Jewish mother. So this is a guy named Lou Boudreau, who's a Hall of Fame shortstop. Good Jewish name. Yeah, he's a shortstop from the Indians from 1938 to 1952. He's another Hall of Famer. 63.6 war. He's an MVP, eight-time All-Star, World Series champion, and he has a batting title under his belt. Over 7,025 big league plate appearances. His slash line was 295, 380, 415 for 795 OPS and a 120 OPS plus. Well, that you, you are getting a guy who's very good at getting on base because nobody cared about walks back then. He only has 68 career homers, not a ton. 66 career triples, 385 doubles, so he has more gap-to-gap -gap power. Um, He's more of a top-of-the-order type hitter. Which yeah. is what you'd want on your shortstop. Another player. excellent player, Hall of Famer. And fun fact, he's the father-in-law of Danny McLean, who I don't know if you know who that guy is. He was like an amazing pitcher in like his early 20s and then just completely flamed out. Yeah, I like recognize that name, but like if somebody was like, Danny McLean, and then the clock just started ticking. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, like, oh, ah, ah. yeah, if you're in Saw and somebody just says Danny yeah, McLean, dude, I was literally about to say, like, if this was a exactly. Saw trap, I would be done. So, anyway, so moving on, the left fielder, another Hall of Famer, Ralph Kiner. How did he make the team? Jewish he, he has a Jewish grandmother, which, as we stated earlier, eligible for the yeah, law that, of return. Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't Ralph Heiner notoriously bad in the field? I think he was terrible in the field, leading to only a 48.1 war. But you can live with a bad left fielder because over 6,256 plate appearances, he hit 369 homers, 216 doubles, and here's his slash line. 279, 398, 548. So that guy's are super. 946 OPS, 149 OPS plus. So who cares who does it? Exactly. You can put in a defense or replace it. So moving on, the center fielder, people might go, but Ethan, he's a right fielder, and they would be right. But we don't really have a center fielder. Guys play a little bit out of position on teams all the time. To Sean Green, 15-year big league veteran, two-time All-Star, Gold Glove winner, Silver Slugger, I think another 30-30 guy. He has 445 doubles, 328 homers, 162 career steals to 52 career caught stealings, and he has a 283, 350. 494 slash for an 850 OPS and a 120 OPS plus. So the next guy that we're going to be moving on to, people are going to go, but he's on steroids, and I'm going to go, we're True. not, we're not factoring that he in. He was good while well, he was exactly, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Steroids we're not factoring in because that'll just take more players out of the player pool, and that's not really the point. So, so Ryan Braun, the right fielder, NL MVP, Rookie of the Year, six-time All Star, five-time Silver Slugger, 7,300 career plate appearance, 7,340 to be exact, 408 doubles, 352 homers, 260. 16 career steals to 60 caught stealing. Yeah, he was like deceptively Dang. good. At he was, yeah, he was super fast. He doesn't Three. read like a fast guy, but he really was. And there's some good Ryan Braun trivia to be had, I believe, about the year 2013 specifically, because it was Mike Trout's second year. So Mike Trout came up in his rookie year, and he had the cup of coffee the year before that, and he wasn't that good. And then in his second year, his first full year, Mike Trout was Mike Trout, right? He was the best player in the whole league. The next year, Nick has the first pick in the fantasy league. Oh, boy. League. Oh, boy. This was my worst pick ever. Go Everybody ahead. and their mom is like sitting there. We're all planning out our draft and we're like, okay, so Mike Trout's going to be off the board. And Nick goes out there. Everybody's like, okay, first pick, Mike Trout, right? And he goes, no, 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 no. I'm taking Ryan Braun. Huge mistake. Let us not forget, not only was that the wrong pick because Mike Trout's Mike Trout, that was the year that Ryan Braun got suspended. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got absolutely nothing out of Ryan Braun. Yeah, that was, that's a bummer. But Unfortunately, Ryan, fortunately, I don't think it was a yeah, but Ryan, pick Ryan Braun was very good at that point. But Ryan Braun, they, over his career, he slashed 296, 358, 532, 891 OPS, 134 OPS+. plus. One of the greatest handshakes of all time with Prince Fielder. That's a good point, and he also has that to your team. It's these kind of intangible. Really to go over. Yeah, the exactly. Jewish team is lacking in great handshakes, so mm -hmm. they're going to need mm -hmm. Ryan sure. Braun to fill for that sure. gap. Also, I think the Jewish team has a lot of really good nicknames on it. There's the a Hebrew. couple of Hebrew hammers. Yeah, Ryan Braun being the Hebrew hammer happens to just really speak to me. So, uh, the starting rotation, Sandy Koufax, as we said. Yeah, no, Paul no, Jim Palmer, Paul uh, number three, Ken Holtzman, Joe Horlin, and Steve Stone. The thing to keep in mind, Koufax and Jim Palmer, two Hall of Famers at the top. Jim Palmer uh, was adopted by a Jewish father. He's not Jewish, but a Jewish father gets in. So Koufax and Palmer, excellent. And then Holtzman was kind of an 
King's Eater. Same thing with Horland. And then the last guy, Steve Stone, uh, was not very good, but he had one Cy Young year. So that's what gets him on the team. But, but all of those pitchers are actually very good, though. Like, even Steve yeah. Stone, has a, was it 4.04 FIP? That's not bad for a 5 So here's the, So yeah. here's the thing, too. When I started doing this, I was like, man, Steve Stone, that's like nothing special. Man, when I started doing teams like the Netherlands, Steve Stone would be an ace on so many teams. Oh, an so asset, like, for sure. Yeah, so have it, yeah, having your number five starter be a guy with a Cy Young year, you're doing fine. So oh, yeah. we, we've been talking a lot about guys with Cy Young years over the last 20 seconds. A little bit of a spoiler for you guys in the bullpen. We're not going to be talking about We won't be talking about all-stars even. Yeah, segue to the bullpen. Craig Breslow. Probably the best this team has to offer, right? Uh, yeah. And number two would be Scott Radinsky, Mark Clear, Larry Sherry. Dude, that guy owns a <laughs> furniture store. Ralph Branca, Mo Drabowski. I don't know who that is. That's a good name. I don't know, dude. That's a good yeah. name. That is a good name. I won't Ron Davis and this guy. Look, oh, Scott Feldman. Yeah, Scott Feldman <laughs> is the most modern guy. So here's the thing to know about the bullpen. Craig Breslow was actually a lot better than you think he was. Scott Radinsky was basically Craig Breslow in the 90s. And then the rest of it is just guys. He's like guys so who can weird. throw the ball and not like blow the save, basically. Now, Ralph Branca, did he give up the Ralph shot? Ralph Branca around gave the up the shot he, around the, Exactly. How does Scott Rowland play into that, though? So Scott Rowland a is good actually... Question. Not Jewish. Uh, have you gotten a, a read on this? Well, we'll have Scott? to. Well, Scott, well, Scott, I went to his local synagogue. Uh, we're not ready. Scott, there. let us know. Scott, let yeah, us know. Scott, feel free to call yeah, in. Scott, we know you're listening. Go ahead. So the bullpen really <laughs> is a lot of jags. It's a lot of just yeah, guys yeah. you can hand the ball to and be like, all right, we'll see what happens. Yeah, full um, it's a everybody. Jags. Everybody's ERA plus is right around a hundred, which again, not impressive. Mm -hmm. But when you look at teams like the Netherlands, it doesn't have enough pitching. Teams like Greece, teams like the current. Phillies. Right. Teams with the current <laughs> Phillies. These guys would be a godsend to a lot of teams. So a guy like Ron Davis, who, fun fact, is Ike Davis's father, he would be like the number two reliever on a team like Greece. Um, so we'll finish it out. I'd like to do a manager for every team. Okay. The manager would be Bob Melvin. I think he's a three-time manager of the year, and he never won a World Series, but he's been to plenty of playoffs. He has a record of 1,346 to 1,272 for a 514 winning percentage, uh, but a lot of those are bad years, like the Diamondbacks and stuff. You guys know him as the A's manager, and now he's the Padres manager. Excellent manager. So that's Team Israel. That's a loaded team. We'll get into some teams like Greece and the Netherlands and stuff, which aren't quite as good. And then we'll obviously we'll get into teams like Italy, which will probably be better. I would say the strengths of this Jewish team. Offense. Offense, for sure. Their defense, it has a couple of holes in it. Yeah. But otherwise, it's very good. On pitching, great start, bad finish. Bad finish. Yeah. So, so it's, but, but, like, but, it's a lot like the Phillies. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, I would say great start, average finish. Pitching way better than the Phillies, by the way. Yeah, way better. <laughs> yeah. Than, because, because because no one in that pitching staff is bad. They're all just average. They're all just, they're all just yeah. meh. Which, on the world stage, when you look at these other teams, excellent. So, that's that. This has been the Baseball Podcast. Now, are we going to squash a beef every week? We yeah. will squash beefs. If there's when, beefs when, to be squashed. Yeah, when, when, beefs, when beefs need squashing. <laughs> beefs. beefs. <laughs> when our beefs are about. <laughs> so, I, so, I think this has been the Baseball Podcast. It has been.